Hello guys, welcome back to Simpler Difficult. In this video, I want to walk you through my architectural rendering process from start to finish. And I believe by the time we are done, you will have an idea of what it takes to get this type of works done. The softwares I use, the services I use, where I get my models from these days, and even down to the plugins and scripts I use to make my life easier while working you know, in 3ds mass and Corona. If this is your first time watching my channel, welcome. My name is Chokwode. And on this channel, we talk about a lot of stuff, but predominantly we talk about stuff that help architects get better at representing their idea through being compliant model and hyper-realistic renders while improving their workflow and increasing productivity in their workplace. This video is sponsored by The Great Catalog. More about them later on in this video. This has to do with discussing with a client to know what they want from you. Okay? What roles will you be playing in the project? Will you be doing rendering alone or will you also be doing the designing? I say this because I work with architects too and usually they have ideas of how they want their project to be. They will have ideas of how they want their spaces to be like. Okay? What designs to do on the wall, what type of furniture to use. If this is the case, these ideas get sent over in form of sketches, PDF, mood boards, pinning trace boards, and so on. And most times, to understand these ideas better, it is always helpful to look at them within the context of the space you'll be working on. And if I don't already have it, this is when I request for the plan of the space or the building at large, depending on the scope of work, whether I'm doing the interior rendering or I'm doing the entire built interior exterior or just exterior rendering and then the, and then the plan gets sent over to me this plan they come in form of sketches with dimension because however how else am i going to model it if it doesn't have dimensions it can also come with working drawing in form of a pdf all right or it can come as a dwg file that's autocad file or it can come as a 3d model file maybe revit sketchup and so on you have, you get the idea if it comes as a Revit file, it becomes easier because I just have to open the file now and you know study it alongside the ideas from the client or the architect. But then if it, com if it comes as a sketch with dimension or even working drawing PDF or even DWG, all these things are 2D formats. That means I have to bring them into my Revit and then model them. After which I will now study it, you know, alongside the ideas from the architect or come up with my own design. Now I know a lot of CGRTs model in 3ds Max, and they do this to scale by importing the AutoCAD file, an AutoCAD file into, let's say, into 3ds Max. okay? Is it that they import the AutoCAD plans, elevations and sections? They can even import pictures, images of the space they want to model into the 3ds Max software user interface and model what they have to model from there. But, well, that is all good and fine, but I want to advise you to use a software that you are most comfortable and quick with, that is going to give you what you want and can be able to export your model to a file format that is readable by the software you are going to be using to render. Now, for me, that software is Revit. I use Revit to do 99.9% .9 of all my model. And that is simply because that is what I'm comfortable with. And then I can also export to 3ds Max, which is the software I used for rendering. Okay, now, so when I'm done with modeling in Revit, okay, I will do the designs that I want, you know, for each of the spaces. Okay, but if I'm working with an architect now, I will just study what they asked me to do in the spaces, okay, and then do them. Then if I have any suggestions to make or inputs to make, I will just make them to the architect. And the architect may or may not accept my suggestion. But then this is basically where we do the back and forth, trying to understand each other and the ideas better so we can you know, come together and make magic for the project. So it is very important that you discuss, you know, with the client, okay, or the person you're working with, architect or interior designer, get to better understand what it is. Because on the initial stage when the discussion and the ideas were passed across, it was done without, you know, having the scale in mind. But now you are working with scale and some things, some of the ideas, initial ideas that the architect or you yourself had at the initial stage may not really work out the way you thought it would so now it is time for you to go back and forth and get the appropriate designs for this space okay that is how i do it anyway 
okay so when you are done discussing and you know going back and forth with your client and you know exactly what it is you are doing now it is time to export your file and head over to 3ds max where we're going to be doing our rendering now after modeling in revit i export my files for rendering in 3ds max now in revit you can export your file to dwg or fbx i prefer to export to fbx but whichever you prefer make sure you're in the 3d view when you do that when you export your file okay so that we export the file in 3d now when i come over here in the 3d view you realize that the model is looking like a box out here with no detail as to what a building should look like from the exterior that is because i like to consider the scope of my work when I'm modeling for a project. There's no need to model the exteriors when I will only be working on the interiors. So when the exporting is done, it is now time to open 3ds Max, import the file and start the rendering process. Okay, now when I say rendering with 3ds Max, okay, I don't mean that you open your file in 3ds Max and you start rendering with 3ds Max, nope. There are what we call render engines, okay? Render engines are basically plugins that we use to render images in 3ds Max and other softwares like SketchUp and um, Rhinoceros. Even Revit has render engines inside them. And for 3ds Max, we have a lot of render engines that are compatible to it. Okay, we have um, V-Ray from Chaos. We have Corona Renderer from Chaos. We have um, Arnold. We have F-Storm and so on. Now, the one I prefer to use is Corona Renderer. Okay, simply because it is straightforward and very easy to use. Now, I have some beginner tutorials on this channel. Okay, do well to check them out if you haven't already done so. So after importing the file, I start work on the composition. Okay, this basically involves placement of cameras and arrangement of furniture in the scene. After which, I will work on my lights. Okay, while working on the lights, I will be doing tone mapping where I work on the exposure and the color of the image that I'm about to render. Okay, after that, then it's time for me to work on the materials. Okay, all these I do while using you know some plugins. You know to make my life easier plugins like floor generator for generating realistic floors and then forest park for trees hedges gravels and grasses and all was not i also use scripts scripts like um copy to copy models between scenes and then image comp helper to help me with the camera compositions okay i also use relink bitmap it helps me to relink the maps you know of my materials in the scene seamlessly without having to go to you know click a lot of buttons now there are things you have to get right to get a realistic and stunning looking renders all right now the first one is your camera angles and settings you need to get this right if not your image will not be looking right and realistic now the second one is lighting very very important because lighting has a way of improving the realism of your scene now the third one is high quality models you need high quality models to create a more realistic and immersive experience for your audience because high quality models not only look more realistic but also enhance the overall visual appeal of your render and that brings us to the sponsor of today's video the great catalog the Great Catalog is a 3D marketplace for your interior design and architecture. They offer a lot of these high-quality 3D models I am talking about. Their website provides you as an interior designer with an extensive and user-friendly catalog of 3D models for furniture, lighting, plumbing, materials and decor. And they also have GC Measure there which you can download and start using for free. GC Measure is a script that helps you streamline the process of inserting 3D model into your 3ds Max scene directly from Great Catalog site. This eliminates the need to download unzip files or prepare the model separately before merging it into your scene. The GC Major as well as their website features an efficient search function for easy filtering based on your specific needs. Whether you are looking for premium model or free model, Yes, free model. So even if you can't afford their premium services, which is very cheap, by the way, we'll talk about it in a minute, you can start with the free models. Great Catalog offers a collection of free 3D models of the same high quality as the premium models. And you can download three free models every day. And that's that. If you want more free models, you will have to come back the next day. If you can't wait till the next day, you can buy the models individually or you can consider checking out their premium plans. Now, the Great Catalog has three premium plans, okay? They have the Premium 15, they have the Premium 30, and the Premium 50. With Premium 15, you have access to all models, right? And you can download 15 premium models per month. 
And instead of the three model you get for free every day with the free plan, you are going to be getting five free models per day. With premium 30, you are going to be getting 30 premium models every month and then 10 free models every day. With premium 50, you are going to be getting 50 premium models per month and then 20 free models every day. To be honest, this is the first time I'm seeing something like this, okay? To have a 3D model marketplace make use of a subscription as part of their payment plan, okay? Now you get to pay a flat rate and you get, you know, an amount of model which makes the model way cheaper because this model you can't get them for us you know for anything less than seven dollars per model now you are going to get like 15 or say 30 or 50 models for a flat rate now you have access to any model you want okay and you can also when you pay for this premium subscription plans you're going to get an increased number of free models per day so with this premium subscription, you're going to be saving a lot of money, all right? So to get started with your subscription, click on the link in the description, all right? And you'll get 30% discount on your first month of subscription. Now I'm done with the rendering, it is time to head over to Photoshop to improve the image from the rendering. Now what I do on this stage can be very minimal because of the fact that you know corona renderer in the frame buffer of corona renderer there are lots of tools that you can use to improve your image you know before rendering inside corona but then with photoshop you can do so much more with ease and typically what i do is i use camera raw filter then some adjustment layers and maybe add some cut as humans if there is need for that when all that is done i export the file and I send it over to the client for him to, you know, approve. When the client sees the render and approves of the work, that means my work is done. But then if there are corrections or reviews to be made, I will just take note of them and then head back to 3ds Max, make those corrections, okay? Render them again in 3ds Max and then repeat this process in Photoshop and then send over to the client. Now, a way I reduce the number of reviews I have to do in each project that I work on is to ensure that I carry the client along throughout the rendering process. Okay, so I get their feedbacks and these feedbacks help me to refine the design and the renders even more. Now, I hope this overview of my architectural rendering process was helpful to you. If you have any question you'd like to ask, ask and I'll do my best to answer you in the comment section. And if you're interested in learning how to use Corona Renderer for 3ds Max to create renders for different kinds of scenes, check out the links in the description. One of them includes a playlist of my 3ds Max beginners tutorial. Remember to like this video if it was helpful to you. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. And ring that bell so you get notified each time I release a new video. Thank you very much for watching this video. I will see you in the next one.